first visitors at the time? Let's not rub it in. I, 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 I love coming to a conference and following NASA in a panel. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're PASA, you guys pronounce it wrong. It's <laughs> but even better yet, Mitch Resnick's gonna stand up and explain why all my slides are wrong. Um, I, my name's Damian Evans, I'm from the Providence After School Alliance. We, um, we run a citywide after school system in, in Providence, out on the East Coast. And um, we started about 10 years ago in the middle school. And we've got almost about half of the public middle school kids in programs uh, that are delivered by almost 100 program providers in our community. This puts the kids out on Narragansett Bay, studying water quality, collecting crabs, uh, designing solar go-karts, which they literally close a street down in Providence and race. Um, uh, on the high school end, uh, which is a more recent initiative in the last three or four years, we now have credit-bearing opportunities that happen after school. Um, and we're working, we're sort of growing into our, our school system now. We're in just two of the eight uh, high schools in Providence. Um, you're gonna hear me talk about, uh, not really too much about badges, uh, actually, but more about the experiences our kids have and what exists underneath our badges. Uh, we're, we're proud to say we're one of the first cities now in America where kids are getting graduation credit for the learning they do out of, outside of school and getting recognized by it with an open digital badge. Um, and we're happy to hear that Chicago is going to be joining us in that. Thank you. So let's talk about what's underneath our badge. Uh, none of our badges exist uh, I until we have all these quality pieces in play. Um, so we use a program quality assessment tool. We observe all of our after school programs. Are there after school providers here that are aware of the PQA? The handful of you. Yeah, they're all next door, good. It's a fairly impressive observation tool to ensure program quality. It's about 15 pages long. Um, starts from, is there access to clean water? Are the kids welcomed when they walk into the program? And it goes all the way up to that pyramid where we all want to head around critical thinking skills and the kids have opportunities for youth leadership. Um, we do daily uh, real-time attendance tracking with our kids using youth services um, and we respond to it. So if a kid doesn't show up, a phone call goes home. Uh, we've got to stop collecting data and not responding to it. It's the only way to improve uh, program quality. Um, in the high school level, we do align some of the content curriculum of our community partners with standards for school so the school can kind of understand what it is. We don't necessarily, that includes Common Core. We don't say we align with Common Core. We make connections to Common Core. We have values that exist outside of the school that have to do with youth development, social emotional intelligence that uh, we, we value a little bit more dearly right now. But we understand if we're going to get credit, we want to start making those connections. Um, what that does is it allows our formal education institutions like Providence Schools to provide credit. They can look at a badge and understand all the stuff that's underneath it. Um, and it also allows our higher education institutions like Rhode Island College to take a look at a badge that represents a 10 week program and understand, geez, that's something we'd like to accept in our college application process, which they just started doing this year. I'm going to give you a quick run through of what, what a typical program looks like so you can start understanding sort of what our badges represent. Our badges really are much more about our programs. This is one of our very early programs is a web development course that actually was run by Kerry Lemoy, who's up front, um, who's the co-founder of Coterie, which is our badge technology partner. Um, and she worked with some high school students to teach them how to build a website it was for 10 weeks. And she, I said, Kerry, we're going to... Um, Align your stuff to some standards. We're going to create a rubric, and she's going standards, rubrics. What? I'm a web developer. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I said, well, list all the skills you know these kids are going to need to get in 10 weeks to build a website. And she listed about a page and a half long. And we kind of used that and created a rubric out of it so that at the end, when they demonstrate their skills, the educators could do some assessment. Um, so there's just a sample of one of the technology standards and that was the actual planning document we used and part of that is saying what are the benchmarks here? What are the assessments both formal and informal? Um, uh, this was the first website one of the girls built in the, in the very first week. Very basic website. This was the code behind it. She was learning HTML and CSS. By week two you can see she's starting to input background color, borders, uh, images. There's a link to her favorite shopping site. Um, which is just great, and um, this is the code behind that. 
And I was helping facilitate this course, and at this point we knew we were screwed because the kids were learning so fast um, that our, content, our curriculum, if there's educators in the room, you know, you write a month of curriculum and you have to throw it out after day one and revise it. Um, by the end of it, this is the, the, the student on the left, she's demonstrating, we have a final demonstration, we don't call it a presentation because we really want it to be interactive where they're showing some of the skills. She had her website up on one screen and the code up on the other and that's her teacher and one of PASA's STEM coordinators who, the demonstration was literally 30 minutes, open questions on anything you want to ask her about the code because she had built it, she had her hands on it, she made it, she kind of blew people out of the water. And as an aside, it was a little bit embarrassing. Her principal was there and said, geez, how'd you get into this? And have you done any of this before? It sure looks like you did. And she said, well, I kind of show, showed up to the class because my friend took it, which is great. That's why teenagers do a lot of things, good and bad. Um, and actually, I took, you know, I took Ms. Jones's class last year around web development. Um, but we didn't do any of this stuff. I learned how to do code. And it turned out their, program, their web development class at the end had her drawing a picture of what a home page would look like for a fake Costa Rican tourism company. Um, she wasn't coding, she was drawing. Um, and that just speaks to the you know, lack of access and resources and, um, that we have in our schools across the country. It's not um, pointing the finger at one Providence school. Um, the interesting thing is we were developing out this expanded learning opportunities. These are the credit bearing um, courses that our program providers host after school. We want to promote that to gain interest, to have a community that could stand up and say we get this. And we hired two of the students to help develop the, um, the site, which is here. And that's actually one of the other students, Nick. And at the time, we had a new superintendent coming in which unfortunately across country we know happens about every 2.3 years, which isn't the most helpful thing. So what we did was onboard the, the, the superintendent into all the, the good stuff that Problems After School Alliance is doing. And the students caught wind that we were gonna present this and they said, well Damien, don't you think it's a good idea if we tell the story about how kids learned the skill and built the website and shouldn't we tell the story on the website? And of course, they were light years ahead of I. And um, we did that and I said, well, we're meeting with her in two days. <laughs> and if you can get a page together that explains or sort of talks to what you did, great. I didn't even have time to read it, which I don't suggest, you know, when you're trying to get <laughs> on board or superintendent. But this is what she wrote. But as days passed, it gave me a sense of where I want to be in the future, knowing how confident I had become. What an incredible statement. Um, she became confident through coding, which she never thought she'd be able to do and actually wasn't interested in it at the beginning. How amazing. And now we have students in the high school end for us that are working with a dozen, 15 partners from the community that are providing great learning experiences, that are raising the kids' confidence, that are giving them real skills in the real world. And we've got 100 program providers on the ground in the middle school. Um, one of the challenges for providing credit for stuff the kids are doing outside of school is the teachers aren't always able to get there. So we built a sort of an online learning platform. The kids were expected as part of the credit to be uploading evidence of their learning. Um, this is one of the student profile pages about the same time. This is when we, we learned about the digital media um, learning badges competition. And you can actually now see the badges. This student has taken several uh, programs with us. Uh, they've got the, a sort of a blog on the left where they're uploading the content. Um, and the kids were, we're learning this space. We're, we are not pros in, in this at all. This is a very dynamic, continuing conversation around where and when learning happens. Um, but some of these kids are getting hundreds of views from their peers and they're going, whoa, who's reading my stuff? Some kids aren't logging on and we're learning and listening to them about that as well. Um, these kids, if you ask them to talk about their badges, they probably wouldn't say very much. They would talk much more about the fact that they learned how to build a bike, that they worked with an amazing mentor and engineers without borders, students from Brown University, um, and they'd be much more likely to talk about the fact that they designed a protracting umbrella for their bike. Um, I said for the crappy Providence weather. In our middle schools, we're, we're just now starting to design some of the badges. Uh, we come from the background of youth development where youth voice and choice is critical. So they design the logos with us, they design the badges with us. This is one of the students with some of the work she did. I really appreciated that she immediately started drawing outside of the badge. Um, and I just, I told, we worked with a design firm. We said, pay attention to what these students are doing here. 
Um, because really it's not about the badge, it's about girls that love to dance and are learning to dance. Um, it's about a kid learning to weld. Um, those, are, those are the important experiences that badges will help us connect and understand what's happening better. They won't replace necessarily. Thank you.